1.1, we see that UCorp will grow sales costs on all balance sheet items by 15%. That's their intended goal year over year, um, over their year one actuals. What is the plug or what is the external financing needed in this problem? Uh, two simple equations, sales minus cost equals net income. Uh, the income statement equation and assets equal liabilities plus owner's equity, the balance sheet equation. So I take my year one numbers, uh, sales 36,000, cost of 29,800, and then PAT of 6,200, and simply multiply them by 1.15. And I get sales of 41,4, cost of 34,270, and then income of 71,30 in year uh, number two. Forecast for uh, the balance sheet. I do the same thing. I take the assets of 26.4, multiply by 1.15, and I get um, second year value for assets of 30,360. My debt of 6,300 grows 15% to 72.45, and my equity of 20,100 grows to 23,115. Uh, my total liabilities plus owner's equity must match my assets and they do, and my balance sheet is balanced. So the question is, what is the plug? This is different than um, what is shown in the text, which where we're trying to find uh, the plug with, with the balance sheet out of balance. Here the balance sheet is balanced, so management must have done something to balance things. So uh, my equity I can see went up from 20,100 to 23,115, or a delta of uh, 3,015. I expect all my net income to go into uh, the equity account uh, not being told anything different. Uh, so um, I have a difference of $4,115. So my dividends paid is the plug. Management went ahead and paid a dividend of 4115 to make this balance sheet balance. And that is your answer, 4115. Second way to look at this is to look at my equity account of 20100 last year. Add to it the uh, net income of 7130 And I expect to see... Uh, the equity account at 27,230. When I look at the equity account for year two, I only see 23,115 right here. And so there's my delta again of 4,115, and that shows that management paid a dividend of $4,115. There's your answer to problem number one. In problem 4.2, UCorp this time will grow sales cost and assets at 15%, but debt and equity do not. So we freeze debt and equity, no MAS, no more debt and equity. Uh, this time different also, we're going to pay half of our net income uh, out in dividends and keep half. Now what is the plug? So a little bit different than uh, problem number one. Sales makes cost deal equal net income as always, and it's got to be assets must equal liabilities plus owner's equity. So just like in um, problem one, we multiply our sales by 1.15 and our cost by 1.15 and our assets by 1.15, but we do not multiply our debt and equity. We leave them low. Uh, the other difference is in our net income of 7130, we're going to uh, keep half in addition to retained earnings, and we're going to give away half uh, in dividends. So the additions to retained earnings move to the equity account in year two. My assets are 3360, and then I want to see if my balance sheet is balanced. So I have 6300 still on the uh, debt in the debt line. 20,100 in the equity line, again, no change, and I must move my additions to retain earnings, half of my net income of 35.65 into the uh, right side of the balance sheet, then I want to see if I'm balanced. I have assets of 30,360, and when I add my debt plus equity plus additions to retain earnings, I get uh, 29,965. I'm out of balance, so it, it's got to be, I must balance it, and what do I need to balance my 33.60 and my 29.965? but a plug of $395. Uh, there is, uh, are your answers to problem 4.2. In problem number six, we have given that Schenkel has uh, assets and cost proportional to sales, debt and equity are not. 30% dividend payout ratio, which means they have a 70% uh, percent B or retention ratio. What is their IGR internal growth rate, the rate at which I can grow my sales? cost assets without um, any plug whatsoever. So the percent IGR is ROA times B divided by 1 minus quantity ROA times B. Using the income statement and the balance sheet, I get my ROA by taking my net income divided by my assets, 34.80 divided by assets of 36.6, and I multiply that times my uh, retention ratio or B of 0.7 and um, divide by 1 minus the numerator 
and I get an answer uh, for IGR of 7.1303%. Very simply, there's your answer to problem number six. In problem number eight, we're given that Alexander Company has assets and costs that are proportional to sales, debt, and equity are not. Constant debt to equity ratio, a 30% dividend payout ratio. What is the percent sustainable growth rate? SGR is ROE times B divided by 1 minus ROE times B, slightly different than the IGR. And in this case, this is the maximum increase in sales without any equity financing. No equity financing allowed. Debt is okay as a plug. Um, I have my income statement, year one actuals, and I have my balance sheet, year one actuals. And from that is where I'm going to get my SGR. I always use year one when calculating IGR and SGR. So in this case, I take my net income of 7722 return on equity of 48,000, and uh, multiply that times B of 0.7 divided by 1 minus the numerator, and I get a uh, sustainable growth rate of 12.6903%. That's a maximum increase in sales I can get without any new equity financing. Debt financing is okay to balance a balance sheet. My maximum increase in sales then is my 12.69% on top of my current sales figure of 53,500. Uh, so uh, 53,500 times 1.126903, and I get a, uh, or 0 0.126903, and I get a max increase in sales of 67,8933. How'd I get that? I took my 53,5 times 0 0.126903. There's your answer to problem number eight. And problem number 14, Caleb's Welding Supply says the following fundamentals. Profit margin of 7.5%, uh, capital intensity ratio of 0.65, uh, debt to equity 60% or 0 0.60 times, um, NPAT of 67,000 and dividend of 16,000 paid out. Uh, they want to know uh, what is the sustainable growth rate. Uh, SGR is ROE times B over 1 minus ROE times B. Uh, and to calculate the ROE, I need profit margin times asset turnover times equity multiplier. So I need to find ROE first, and then I can find B, and then I can calculate the SGR. So um, ROE is profit margin of 0 0.075 uh, times 1 over 0 0.065 capital intensity ratio is equal to 1 over uh, asset turnover. So the inverse is true, so I take 1 over 0 0.065, so CIR equals 1 over ATO, and ATO equals 1 over CIR. So that's how I figure out asset turnover. And then equity multiplier is a 1 plus debt to equity ratio. Equity multiplier equals 1 plus debt equity. And that's how I calculated equity multiplier. Uh, with that, I get an ROE of 18.4615%. Uh, then I can plug that into the uh, SGR equation, ROE, 18.4165% times B. Now, B is my net income minus my dividends. So I take my net income, subtract my dividends, and divide that by my net income, and I get a, a B, or retention ratio, of 76.1194%. Plugging that into the equation for SGR, I get an SGR of 16.3505%. And there's um, your answer to problem number 14.